Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor. You know, in crypto, uh, especially over the last year, there are many days that you wake up and you're ju you just kind of like shaking your head and you're like, when will all this negativity end? Because I know that everything that we have been saying and reading and studying and, and hearing, we're right on point. We know it. But every once in a while you wake up and it's just so negative that you're just like, when will all this go away and the truth really come out? Well, to, this morning is one of those mornings <clears throat> where the truth is out. It's, it's right out there for you to see. And, it, and it's as clear as day what we are a part of, a part of as XRP investors. Um, this is from C3 Nick. This is the Paris FinTech Forum in, uh, this year. Um, this happened, I think, in the middle of the night this morning. Uh, Ripple CEO and Swift CEO on stage engaging in a very interesting discussion. Um, and this is from Ro Ro Romano Di Borini for sh that shared it. And C3 Nick posted this video. You should go check out this video in his in his Twitter feed. Well, I've gone and listened to it. The first thing that I want to mention about it is the first words out of Brad Garlinghouse out of out of Brad Garlinghouse mouth are quote, we are moving into a new world order. And that is not the first time that he has used those words. <laughs> and that like immediately struck me. Um the next thing that I wanted to go, I just wanted to tell you a couple of things that he, that came out of this that were pretty huge. Um, the first one, I want to give C3 Nick some credit. Uh, you know, a lot of you may think that Brad Garlinghouse and Ripple and those guys don't pay any attention to social media. Well, I believe I've seen more than one uh, set of evidence that they very, very well do pay attention to social media, what's going on on YouTube as well as Twitter. Um, and I think this is one example. I'm not saying that, that he got this from C3 Nick, but you do wonder in this particular case. This is a tweet from C3 Nick on December 13th. If I had asked people what they wanted, they would have said faster horses. It was a quote from Henry Ford. I think that Swift made a mistake. They went on and tried to deliver a faster horse called Swift GPI. And there's actually a picture in, in the response where somebody... It, this guy's saying that Swift tried to put a Ferrari, um, a, a Ferrari cover over uh, an old just car or whatever, some regular car. And then, but what's interesting is when you watch this, one of the things that Brad Garlinghouse says is he compares uh, this to a horse and buggy, and he says, "Why make it faster when you when you could just move to a Ferrari?" I mean. What are the chances that Brad Garlinghouse comes out with that one thing and he hasn't seen this? Makes you wonder if he has seen this. I mean, C3 Nick's a smart guy. He puts out a lot of good information. Why wouldn't Brad Garlinghouse take a look at it? And there's another thing that, he, that Brad Garlinghouse said in this same thing. And you've probably heard me talk about it at least five to ten times. He, he, he compares Swift to the early days of Walmart versus Amazon. In other words, Ripple being Amazon and Walmart being Swift. And it, I've made that comparison at least five to ten times on this channel alone. And I'm not saying Brad Garlinghouse got that idea from, from me. It's a really great parallel. He could have come up with it himself. But I'm just making the point that I don't, I, I don't think some of the things that you hear every once in a while, you have to wonder if, if Brad Garlinghouse, as well as a lot of the guys at Ripple, are actually watching what's going on in social media, I believe they are. Um, <clears throat> but I will say, uh, just I like to reiterate this from time to, nine, to time, I don't know anyone at Ripple. I've never met anyone at Ripple. I've never communicated in any way, text, phone, email, anything, on Twitter with anyone at Ripple ever, nor have I communicated with anyone uh, that... Uh, issues any of the tokens or digital assets that I have ever mentioned on this channel. I do not 
get paid by anyone and never would get paid by anyone who, when I talk about coins that I invest in and things like that, that would not be something I would ever do. So I just wanted to make that clear by the way. So the other, and, and I wanted to go through a couple of more things that were, that were said in here. Um, one thing that was very interesting that Brad Garlinghouse said, he said that he, he was making the point that Swift represents a central operator. And I don't believe that he threw that out there for no reason. Remember what we talked about this week about Iran, Russia, China, and I believe even Switzerland was getting on board. Uh, Iran was trying to get around U.S. sanctions, and they were going to do so by, uh, it, it was rumored that they are actually going to come out with their own cryptocurrency as a part of their plan. To, and they had the special, um, what they call it? I'm drawing a blank right now. The special uh, something vehicle. Um, but anyway, there, those countries got together and they were going to try to go around SWIFT. Well, if you think that that's going to just happen and then all of the sudden they're all going to say, oh, okay, we were just mad. We're going to put this back in the bottle. We'll go, we're going to come back to SWIFT. No, that's not how this works. These guys are doing this because they finally saw an opportunity in blockchain to get around it. And that's, and they've been waiting on this type of an opportunity for a long time. And that's why they're doing it. Swift's days are numbered, numbered for that reason, but more importantly, they're numbered just because they are Walmart versus Amazon. Or what I would, uh, I guess there's a lot of different comparisons. You could call them Blockbuster versus Netflix. Um, as a side note, just so I, I forgot to tell you guys the other day, I've talked about Holochain on here a lot. Holochain, one of the people that is is pushing Holochain was one of the founders of Netflix. That's just a point of interest. Um, <clears throat> okay, and then the big news that came out that I think is driving the market up today um, is that is this here from XRP Crypto Wolf. Swift CEO said they will integrate technology from R3, the DLT provider behind the Corda platform. R3 will use XRP with their Corda platform. So we finally have official confirmation that the Swift community will be using XRP. I mean, this is true. For those of you that don't know, the Corda platform is R3's platform. Now, and, and just last month, I believe, they announced what they call Settler. And through Settler, XRP will be the first digital asset that you will be able to use on their platform. And now Swift is going to integrate with R3. I mean, that right there alone probably is what made the market go crazy this morning. So next, um, now this is Christine Lagarde from the IMF. And she, this is a, a Stephen Dia at D-I-E-P-S-A-N-H. He always posts, posts great little short videos. This is just a 50 or so second video, but at the very end, she specifically mentions Ripple and Circle as disruptive companies that are about to disrupt finance. This woman is one of the most powerful people in finance in the entire world and continues over and over, not once, but several times, keeps mentioning Ripple. What, what we're a part of is so huge, and I'm, I tweeted this morning, that yesterday I had a conversation with a, a manager in a major blockchain firm uh, in New York City. And this guy was blown away by the Ripple community and how, how big the Ripple community and how powerful the Ripple community is. There's a reason that the XRP and Ripple community is so big. The reason is because all of this makes sense to us. It, you, you, what other digital asset do you have central bankers and they're even being a converse in the same conversation with Swift? Think about that for a minute. What other digital asset is even in the even close to being in all of those conversations across the world? OK, this is I mean, that this this conference is in Paris. Is your digital asset if you're not an XRP holder is your digital asset even at a Paris FinTech forum with the CEO of Swift on stage, or is your digital asset being talked about by the head of the IMF? I mean, think about that, folks. 
we are we are in monumental historical times. This is this is amazing. Um, okay, finally, I wanted to show you this from Darth Ripple. I talked about this a little bit yesterday, but he kind of tied in what's really on the conveyor belt at Ripple Darth. Backed and Fidelity are on schedule and will start custody trading on Mar in March. SBIBC also will start trading in March. This means crypto will see a huge bull run. Fidelity, Fidelity is a $7.3 trillion market. Huge news. All right. Well, I just want you to look at this through through the, the prism that I've been trying to get my audience to look through for the last eight months. And that, that is just think about it as a as XRP just being on a conveyor belt and where we're headed. We're headed into the arms of the opening of backed, the opening of Fidelity, the opening of SBIVC, who ha, who XRP is one of their main uh, digital assets that, that, that will be traded on the platform. And it's a, it, they control a consortium of like 80 percent of the banks in Japan. We're, we're headed towards all of that. This is after having gone for through a, over a year of a bear run. OK, now we're seeing um, we're, we're seeing that. I mean, we're having we're hearing from people in the IMF. We're hearing from uh, I mean, the leader, the CEO of Swift is have, having to sit on stage with Ripple. Think about the think about what he's having, how, how what he's having to stomach. That the fact that Ripple is powerful enough as a five year startup, this guy's got to sit on stage and 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 be looked at almost as an equal to Ripple. It, the way that the way that they presented that is really amazing for a, a five year old startup to think that a five year old startup has been able to gain that type of power in that short of a period of time is it's phenomenal. It's unbelievable. Okay. So after all this happened this morning, this guy tweets this, what just happened? And this is the XRP price. Well, I'm here to tell you folks, ripple may be XRP may be up eight or 10% today. Well, that as well as the entire crypto market is nothing. It is nothing right now. People, it's nothing. What is what is to come is so huge compared to where we are right now. You and I are so early. It is just I, I can't even get across to you what a position that we are in with everything that is coming. But this says it pretty well. This is a tweet from a guy that I don't I'm not familiar with. But he says Apple now has two hundred and forty five billion dollars in cash on hand. The total crypto mar market cap is 113 billion. A single company can purchase every single coin and token in the entire marketplace twice. Still think you are late to the party, folks? We, you are going to be, we're going to be able to tell our children and grandchildren that we did it. We were, we, we for that we were there at that one moment in our lives where we 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 smelled that opportunity and we grabbed it. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe and hit the like button and tell your friends and family that Apple could buy all of cryptocurrencies two times right now. That is how early to the party that we are. Thank you for listening.